Hi, my name's Costa, and I'm going to uh, show you how to integrate IBM Storage with Veeam version 11. Uh, we're going to be using a VMware vCenter 7 as our host environment. We'll be using IBM Flash System 5000 and 7000 and IBM Cloud Object Storage. So in order to begin, we're going to be adding some inventory to our Veeam console. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on Virtual Infrastructure and Add Server. Now we'll enter our vSphere information. So click on vSphere. And now the name of our uh, vCenter server. So in our case, it is uh, 9.23.228.218. And we'll go ahead and click Next. Then we'll find our credentials. And from the drop down, it is our second from the top. In our case, we'll click uh, Apply, Continue. And it's going to go out to the network and find our vCenter infrastructure. All right, you'll notice on the left hand side, it's already added the vCenter server. And once, uh, once we're finished, uh, we'll be able to see all of our ESX hosts that are in that vCenter or managed from that vCenter. So we can go ahead and click Next and Finish. Now we'll go ahead and we'll go to Storage Infrastructure on the bottom left. And we'll go ahead and add storage. First, we'll start out by adding IBM Spectrum Virtualized Storage, which is the backbone for our flash system storage. And again, we'll put in the IP address, in this case, 9.23.228.110. And we'll go ahead and check off both block, for, block or file for VMware and for Windows servers. Go ahead and click Next. We'll choose our credentials from the dropdown. In this particular case, it will be the fourth one, so the bottom, and click Next. And we'll go ahead and click Next again, and Apply. And it's going to go out into the Ethernet world and pull in the appropriate information on that storage device. Go ahead and click Next and Finish. And we can close here while it's uh, doing the storage discovery. And we'll go ahead and we'll add our next storage device. So add storage up at the top again. What we're doing is we're adding both production storage and backup storage. So we'll go ahead and click on IBM Spectrum Virtualize. And in this case, we're going to do 9.23.228.185 and check off both roles. We'll grab our credentials again, the last one. Go ahead and click Next. And Next. Apply. Next. And finish. And we can close this while it's doing our storage discovery. So now we can go ahead under backup infrastructure on the bottom left. And we're going to choose a backup repository and uh, right click on our backup repository. Um, we'll actually create a, uh, a new backup repository on the left by right clicking and add backup repository. We'll go ahead and choose uh, direct attach storage. We happen to have a volume connected here, uh, Microsoft Windows. 
we'll name the backup repository Flash System. Go ahead and click Next. And we'll click Populate on the top right. We already have a backup volume connected to this Windows host. And it is the B volume for backup. Go ahead and click Next. And we'll go ahead and click Next again. And Next. Apply. And go ahead and click Next. And finish. All right, now we'll go, uh, we'll right click on backup repositories again and add a backup repository. And this time we'll choose object storage at the bottom. We will choose IBM Cloud Object Storage. And we can name this IBM Cloud Object Storage. Go ahead and click Next. We'll enter our service point as HTTPS colon slash slash 9.23.228.201. We'll grab our credentials from down below. Go ahead and click on that. These are our cloud object storage credentials. We'll hit Next. Continue. And now we'll click Browse for the bucket. And this is going out to our IBM Cloud Object Storage. We'll click on the Veeam bucket. Click OK. And then for Folder, we'll click on Browse. And we'll choose the new folder that was already created here. And click OK. Next, we can click Apply. And now we'll go ahead and click Finish. So now we have our block storage repository on our Flash system, and we have our cloud object storage repository. What we want to do with these two now is create a scale-out repository that will combine both of those. So let's go ahead to the left-hand side where it says scale-out repositories and right-click. And we're going to add a scale out backup repository. We can name it uh, anything we want. Scale out backup repository one is perfectly fine. We'll click next. And now we're going to add extents. So we'll click on add and we'll choose the flash system as the first extent and click OK. And then we'll click on advanced at the bottom just to see if there's going to be anything we want to do here. We will choose um, use per machine backup files and then just click OK. We'll click on Next. Okay. Now is where we want to choose where the data will reside. So we will have our hot data reside on the flash systems and our cold data reside on the cloud object storage. So we'll leave data locality as our default setting. Go ahead and click Next. And now we'll extend our backup repository with object storage. And it is our IBM Cloud Object Storage system that we have there. So we'll go ahead and click Apply. Right, and we'll click Finish. So now we have both our flash systems and our cloud object storage configured, and they are configured as a scale out backup repository. The next thing we're going to want to do is start creating some jobs within Veeam. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll edit this backup job by right clicking on the snapshot job. Go ahead and click edit at the bottom. And we're going to pick a VM that is sitting on IBM flash system storage. So go ahead and click next.
So now what we're going to choose is under the OpenShift KM test folder at the bottom, we'll open up server 199 and we'll grab uh, the Windows 2016, uh, any one of those VMs or any grouping of those Windows VMs. Again, we can take one VM, we could take multiple VMs, and it will go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click Next here. So in this particular instance, we're grabbing one VM. We're going to keep this as Spectrum Virtualized Snapshot. Go ahead and click Next. Next again. And we're going to run every hour for seven hours. Hit Apply. Run the job when I click Finish, and then click Finish. Right, so now if the production storage is sitting on IBM Spectrum virtualized based storage, it will go ahead, it will find out which data store this VM resides on and therefore which backend storage volume on the IBM Flash system unit. So it's preparing the VM for a snapshot. The VM is now prepared for the storage snapshot and it will go ahead and take that snapshot and the job has finished in a matter of seconds. So as you'll notice, the difference in speed um, between taking a full backup on a separate storage device versus taking a hardware offloaded snapshot, um, which finished in a matter of seconds. Our VM job one uh, is still about 43% completed. It's only about five minutes old. So now we can go ahead and we can click on storage infrastructure on the bottom left. We can click on the twisty uh, on the top left where IBM storage or IBM Spectrum virtualize. And we can now click on the individual systems and we can actually see a list of all of our volumes and all of our snapshots. So every single system now you can see a list of existing snapshots um, that are set on that system. And same goes with, uh, with these here. So now if we ever wanted to do a, a restore from a snapshot, um, you could simply pull the infrastructure, pull in the inventory from here, uh, right click, and you'll be able to do a restore. So in this particular case, um, if you're right clicking, you can do the uh, taking of a snapshot manually. Um, but if there was a backup job already in place, uh, we'd be able to do the restore there. So we can scroll down and keep going. All right, so there's a list of all our, all our volumes. Um, if we click on home now, we can go back and take a look at where our volume, how our backup job is doing. So if we wanted to, to do a restore of a job, um, we would then hit on the home button. Click the home button and then click on restore and then VMware. And now we can uh, restore from a backup. And we can do a disk restore, entire VM restore. In this particular case, we'll do a entire VM restore. So we'll do an instant recovery. And we'll find the VM that we had backed up. We can go ahead and click uh, Add from Backup. Okay, so we can find all of the uh, the successful jobs that have been done, and there is our Red Hat and our Windows Server backups, and these are some historical backups that we have here. We can pick any one of these options. 
and go ahead and do a restore. Go ahead and click Add. Click Next. Okay, and we're going to restore to a new location. Therefore, we're not going to be overriding the existing production virtual machine. Click Next. And we'll change the name of the restored VM. We'll just put an underscore one on the end of it. We will mount it to that .252 server and go ahead and click Next. Okay. We'll click Next again. Next. And go ahead and finish. And this is going to go ahead and, and run the restore job for us. And we can go ahead and click close while it's doing that restore. We can click on VM job one, and we'll see that it's gone ahead and backed up both of our uh, VMs. Right? And it took about 11 minutes to do a, or just under 12 minutes to do a seed uh, backup. Now, if we wanted to, we could right click on that VM job one and simulate what it would look like if we were to run a, a second uh, job. So we'll just go ahead and click uh, start up at the top. And now this will just be an incremental job. So that was the initial seed base backup. And now we're gonna go ahead and take another backup. And this will leverage incremental technology to only back up what has changed. Now, if we ever wanted to make any updates to any of these jobs, um, we could simply just go into the, the job itself. And as you've seen, right click and edit. Uh, if we get any new VMs that we want to add to a job, we can have multiple jobs running at the same time. You could just go ahead and, and add servers and remove servers as needed. If you just wanted to have a backup policy that backs up everything in your entire vCenter, uh, you don't necessarily have to click down in the granularity of picking individual VMs. You can choose your entire vCenter environment or just individual hosts and do a blanket backup policy for everything there. Again, because we have both of the IBM Flash systems as a target, as well as cloud object storage. Uh, data locality will indicate that our older backups move out to object storage, and our newer backups uh, will stay on uh, the Flash system storage. OK, so that job has now finished. And you'll notice instead of taking almost 12 minutes, it now just took a minute 36. Right, there wasn't that much data that had changed in between in between times. Now that um, concludes what I wanted to show on the uh, demo today. Hopefully this helped you understand how to integrate IBM Flash systems, whether that's for production purposes or for backup repository purposes, as well as IBM Cloud Object Storage um, to a Veeam 11 infrastructure.